So, what else can this thing do? Well, let's uh, push the button. This is going to be extremely tricky because you have to press it for different amounts of times. Time out, yes, brilliant. Uh, for different time intervals to get into the different features and functions. As you can see, this is our transistor tester. We push it again and it goes one step too far. We get a frequency generator. We also get a 10-bit pulse width modulation. We get this. I'm not sure what on earth this is supposed to be. We get switch off. Once again, our transistor tester. And we get this. This is just being called frequency, but as we press this for a long time to select it, you can see it is a frequency counter. Well, let's go ahead to the test bench and see if we can get all these different modes to work. Now, on this little tester, frequency always means the good old TTL 5 volt positive impulse square wave type of stuff. So you can't put a sine wave into this. However, also with all the right settings, uh, just like before, uh, I still can't get the frequency counter to work. Of course, this unit does not come with any kind of a manual whatsoever, so eh, it's going to require some further research getting that to work. I had a lot more luck with the next function, the frequency generator. So you can see I have the uh, tester hooked up to the scope. The red is the negative output and the green is the positive output. It's all hooked up and as you can see we are getting an output. Now this does not look exactly like TTL but you gotta look at the frequency that this is running on and uh, in fact may have to turn the exposure down a little bit so you can see we are getting 2 megahertz so that is quite high and obviously at such extreme frequencies all our little cables and all all the connections are going to start acting as capacitors and so we're never going to get the uh, the two megahertz as a clean signal Oop, lost contact uh, after a while now that is another thing for some reason after a while it always goes back into the uh, selection mode well, let's uh, go ahead and uh, go back there we go back again okay uh, where was I? Um, obviously, um, with all those, um, all the resistances, all the capacitances of the wires, all those, um, all those influences uh, are really, really taking an effect at a frequency as high as two megahertz. So we are never going to get a clean two megahertz. Um, impulse signal out of this unit. It's just not going to happen. Not with uh, what basically is kind of a toy, at least when it comes to uh, the build quality. You will need BNC jacks and uh, cables all properly terminated and all that. Now, uh, that does involve quite a lot more. However, as we test, uh, <laughs> as we push our test button, you can see we can go down to 1 megahertz, push it again, we go down to 500 kilohertz, again 250, and yep, it is starting to look more and more like a, uh, like a positive impulse wave, square wave. We're getting a peak to peak of uh, around about 5 volts. So that is a uh, good old TTL level. As we go down even further, you can see our wave is starting to look increasingly more clean. 
and uh, those of course are all our uh, capacitances that uh, need to be charged up right here and that are slowly discharging right there. So uh, as we uh, go ahead and uh, turn that down, we can go down to we're now at 50 kilohertz and uh, I'd say that is looking quite good already. So uh, 50 kilohertz, 25 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz, and I'd say that is looking quite square. We can go all the way down, we're now at 5 kilohertz, Two and a half kilohertz, this is one kilohertz. This is some sort of an oddball frequency that uh, it probably only selects because it's some sort of uh, some sort of a, uh, a, a value that it can easily calculate out of the clock frequency of the internal crystal. So that is uh, 442 hertz. And you can see now the increments are getting much uh, smaller. This is, uh, well, we had quite a bit of a step there. That's 250 hertz. We're now down to 100 hertz. That is a 50 hertz. That is 10 hertz. As you can see, that, uh, that's starting to take a while with a refresh rate. This is 1 hertz right there. As you can see, 1 hertz is the minimum and that means we're getting a frequency generator that puts out frequencies between 2 megahertz and 1 hertz. Of course, you can't adjust it very precisely, but it's definitely quite a handy feature. And last but not least, here we have the pulse width modulation. Now, if you don't know what that is and what it's good for, please look it up online. But basically, uh, we could go ahead, hook this up to a... Uh, to a powerful switching transistor and we could use it as a dimmer for our lights, for example. So that's what that is all about, the 10-bit pulse width modulation. As you can see, you can hopefully see, of course, uh, the display up there is now being kind of dark. Let's see, maybe turn it up a little bit again, like so. It says 10%. That means we have a 10% duty cycle on this and we can adjust it. Now, once again, probably the biggest issue of all these additional test modes or uh, functions, much rather, is the single button operation. Now, we press this a short time, we can uh, go up 1%. So, uh, we're now at 11 and uh, I uh, press this multiple times and uh, maybe zoom in a little bit on the scope. You can see it's getting uh, increasingly big, increasingly more, the duty cycle. That is, of course, uh, the duty cycle means uh, which percentage of uh, the total time is this actually turned on. So we are now up at 21%. Now that obviously is going to take you a while, so you, have, you can press this a bit longer to go up 10%. Now you don't want to press it for too long because then you're going to get back into the selection menu. So that is really the tricky bit of this. So uh, and that was not long enough. Here we go, we're now up at 42%, and uh, once again, quite interesting, and go up to 52%, and uh, can go down a little bit. Oh, there we go, that's 60% right there. Here we have 70%. 
eighty percent, ninety percent. So uh, that's that. And then we have well, it says zero percent. So obviously, we're not getting any more trigger on the scope. We can go up to uh, one percent. We're now back up at uh, ninety-four percent. Let's just see how far we can go. Ninety-five. 96. Let's uh, make this a little bit bigger. That's 97. 98. 99 percent. So uh, we're really only getting these little things right there. Not the cleanest thing in the world, but once again, those are all those little capacitances that we have. And as you can see, this is all running at uh, almost 8 kilohertz, so uh, those can take quite a bit of an effect. So, that's the pulse width modulation thing. So there it is, the MK168 transistor tester that can do a whole lot more than just testing transistors. You can no doubt imagine I could continue playing about with this for hours, but I think this video is already way too long. So let's go ahead, turn this thing off, like so. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and see you again soon.